Okay, so the chickens have been doing pretty well. We lost one Orpington uh, last month, not sure what happened. But she just disappeared and uh, then I smelled her inside the coop, so I uh, got her out of there. But couldn't find anything wrong with her. Uh, there was no uh, wounds on her or signs that the other chickens picked on her, so I'm not sure what happened. But uh, So the Orpingtons are one year old, well, one and a half uh, this fall. And the uh, golden sex links, uh, they're from this spring, the red ones. So all the sex links are laying good now. In fact, they lay uh, bigger eggs than the Orpingtons. So uh, we're getting uh, anywhere from, uh, so we got 13 chickens now, I think, and we're getting about anywhere from uh, seven, eight eggs a day to sometimes we get 13. It's a little early for eggs yet, but uh, looks like we got five, six, seven so far. We'll probably get a couple more throughout the day. So we'll uh, clean this out here before long and put fresh straw in here uh, for winter. This is the clean out port. So I just pulled my tractor front end loader right up here and uh, just push that out with the broom and then drive it over to the compost. So one thing I noticed kind of cool in here is I was cleaning out the fence row with the weed eater and I saw this growing and I think this is a cherry tree. Maybe not, but I think it is. So uh, it had three or four more sprouts coming up and I cut those off, which tells me I hit it with the weed eater before when I was uh, cleaning out this fence row. So this is a Premier One electric fence and uh, you gotta keep the uh, grass off of it. Uh, if it gets a lot of grass on it, it's not as effective because it uh, grounds out the shock. But we haven't had any predator problems. Uh, as far as furry predators, we did have some hawk problems last year, and that's when we put in all this uh, net. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this whole run is covered with this uh, fine net to keep the hawks away, which is a bummer because I wanted to be able to move this coop and up and down here to keep them on fresh grass, but uh, with this net on here, it's just it would just be too much of a pain so it's just it's been in this spot ever since uh i put it here a year ago so let's head on down to the beehives okay so here we are down at the beehives I'm using this gopro so it looks like they're really far off and I am probably 15 feet from them right now. So, uh, you know, we had a really good spring harvest and following that we went through our dearth period, which is no rain. We didn't get one rain the whole month of July and about half of August. There was zero rain and it was dry. If you look at some of my past videos and some of my drone shots looking down, uh, it was brown everywhere and you can see how green it is now from this rain So yeah, I I'm struggling to keep up with the uh, Mowing now if I if I can't stay here and keep things mowed. But uh, anyway, so the bees are doing well uh, We've lost a few hives. We've lost three so uh, here's one gone and one there and There's another one back over here. That's uh, was gone so what happened is uh, that's what you call an absconded hive, which means the bees left. Now, why did they leave? Uh, it's kind of a mystery. It's not colony collapse disorder because there wasn't dead bees all over the front where they all died from some sort of uh, chemical or disease or something like that. They were just gone. So when the bees leave, other things move in which is not cool, like wax moths. And they leave a 
web in there like a spider web filled it full of webs and all these larvae and it ruins your comb and it's a stinky nasty disgusting mess uh, two of these had some bad spots in them that were really bad and i just had to cut the comb out but uh i hope that wind's not messing up the mic but uh i froze some of it and uh the honey that the bees hadn't robbed yet and I saved that and it's actually still up my freezer and later today I might put that on one of these uh, single deep hives over here and get it built up and ready for winter so uh, that's basically it for the bees the bees are doing fairly good except for those three that I lost I have uh, one weak hive i actually had two weak hives that i combined into one and it's doing okay now uh for a weak hive anyway Let's see if i can do this without getting stung so there's some pollen coming in y'all see some yellow pollen so hopefully the rest of these bees are bringing in nectar so we're coming into what's now called the uh, fall flow when all the fall flowers start blooming and in central oklahoma a little later uh probably first part of october what's called the goldenrod starts blooming and if you drive down the road and you look in the ditches and you see all these big yellow plumes that's goldenrod and uh, the bees get a lot of nectar from that and it helps uh, get them through the winter uh, so i will harvest those small boxes on the top and pull those off of there and that'll be my fall honey harvest and it'll have some of that goldenrod in it the goldenrod honey smells uh, when it's curing it smells like uh, stinky socks so but after it's done and capped and uh, you actually harvest it it doesn't smell bad anymore it smells like honey Ugh. there's a bee on me or trying to get on me anyway uh so the goldenrod honey will be darker and uh, it's a richer flavor and I tend to like that better but uh, we don't sell that we keep all that and that's usually personal use honey but the fall harvest won't be uh, maybe 10% of what we got uh, in the spring so that's it for the uh, beehives I think I already said that <laughs> bees are doing good so this single hive right here is uh, one I will uh, put that those frames on from the, the absconded hives that still have honey and get it built up to a two deep this one right here is uh, actually two hives combined this number five and number one I moved number five onto number one to make one and I gave them a little bit of sugar water yesterday to help help get them going not sure what's going on with them. I think the queen is really old and she's just she's just hanging out. So uh, hopefully she can get them through to uh, spring and they'll make a new queen and it'll turn off booming a big hive one of these, like one of these others. Okay, so now for the uh, big announcement at the ending. So I'm uh, going to fly my drone up and show you what I'm talking about. So this is what I'm talking about right here. So we're gonna start us a new house and we just broke ground this week. So they came out and uh, scratched the surface. So uh, it's, like I said, it's probably not a big deal to a lot of you guys, but to us, it's a pretty big deal. And the reason I say that is we had been living in this barn here 
for five years. So there's a, inside that barn, there's a tiny home in there. It's a 600 square feet. So uh, that's basically where we've been living the last five years. Okay, so basically that's it. That's the big announcement. So I'm not gonna show our whole construction phase on all my videos. I'm not gonna bore you with all that, but I uh, thought it was kind of cool. I'll probably show you some pictures here and there, but uh, might do a time-lapse video. Anyway, uh, give me a thumbs up if you would, and don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel on your way out, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.